Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, today, if you celebrate it, it's Halloween. If you don't celebrate it, it's still Halloween. But today, I want to be able to talk about narcissism. And we've had kind of like a couple of videos leading up to this one, talking about the mass of narcissism, talking about the scariest part about narcissism, a lot of different aspects just leading up to Halloween week. Uh, well, today, inside of narcissism and narcissistic abuse, it becomes there's a real monster. And the monster is inside and the monster is experienced inside of this relationship ends up destroying you in multiple ways. Many times people discount the actual severity of what you're going through, the severity of the toxicity that you're under, the gaslighting and the effects that it has on you, the, the gaslighting to the place where you have brain fog and you're not even sure how to be able to process or think through different things. There's so many different aspects about narcissism and narcissistic abuse that end up hurting and abusing you. Now, sometimes people are thinking, hey, it's just a disorder and it's not that big of a deal. It is a massive, huge deal because of how it's affecting you on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a monster that's inside narcissism and most people don't want to acknowledge it. Most people don't want to see it and most people want to explain it away. The monster of the narcissist is himself, who he actually is inside and his unwillingness to come to terms with who he actually is. This is why there's always an avoidance. This is why there's always a running away from the accountability, the responsibility. When I sat with my therapist and I asked her the question, am I a man or a monster? It was because I recognized internally who I actually was. I recognized internally what I was struggling with, the battle of actually wanting or not wanting to care for other people, not caring what actually would happen, the rage that would ensue, not caring what resulted of that rage because I didn't care about anything else but myself. The monster inside of narcissism oftentimes stems back and people want to sometimes just equate it only with pride. But pride is a massive piece in it. It's not the only piece because there's multiple layers to narcissistic abuse. There's multiple layers to the narcissist. But when you boil a lot of it down, it comes down to what I want in the moment and how do I avoid any accountability, any responsibility. This means as a narcissist, the whole goal is let me step over other people. Let me push other people aside. Let me run over other people, whatever it takes, as long as I get what I want. But the thought process has to shift inside of his mind to make him seem justified and make it seem okay for him to abuse. He's not always walking through the world being like, let me see how I can abuse people today. That's not a narcissist. But a narcissist is looking at the world thinking, all these people are against me. I need to do what I need to do to protect me, even if that means hurting someone else. Because he's not thinking of it as hurting someone else. Oftentimes, he's thinking of it as self-preservation, the avoidance of the shame and of the guilt. The shame is one of the underlying pieces of narcissism, one of the biggest underlying factors underneath narcissism. Shame of who I am, shame of what's going on, shame of what I've done, shame of how I've shown up, shame of like, you name it, every single aspect. A narcissist is riddled with shame, but the problem is he's unwilling to actually see it. He's unwilling to actually acknowledge it. I didn't realize for the longest time in my life that I even had shame, that it was even a part of my life until I read the book Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And inside of that, it started to actually identify and talk about shame. And I started to realize I actually have shame in my life, huh? Didn't realize that, didn't understand that, didn't see that. Now, I read that book three times before I actually realized there was a whole chapter and that talked about narcissism. Skipped right over it, I guess. In my mind, I was like, well, that's not me, so it must not even apply. I had no clue. But I started to, I realized and identified that I had shame in my life and that shame was coursing through everything that I did. My decisions, my actions, my responses, all of those things were controlled by this piece of shame. And so shame for me had one of the biggest holds on my life because I knew if I approached shame, if shame even like showed up inside of my life, it was game over. I would feel awful. I would feel bad. I would feel like the world was ending. And so I had to do anything I could to run away from it. Now I'd gotten good at running away from it. I'd gotten good at hiding it. I'd done a great job at learning how to be able to lie constantly so I could avoid myself, so I could avoid the situation, so I could avoid what was happening on a day-to-day -day basis. If I could avoid it, then I didn't have to worry about it. It didn't seem to exist. And I'd compartmentalize and dissociate stuff so that I didn't have to worry about the monster inside. So I didn't have to worry about what I was actually feeling because what I was feeling was guilt for how I was showing up. And that guilt was then telling me that I had shame. And the shame was telling me that I'm not a good person that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy. All of these things beating me up internally. And I'm like, no, that's not true. I am this. So as a result, I'd move away from it. Run away from the shame so that I could be 
better in my mind. Often I'm trying to convince myself that I wasn't a bad person, convince myself that I wasn't a liar, convince myself that I wasn't a cheater because I was faithful to wife. All of these bullshit stories that I would make up to try to convince myself that I didn't have this shame, to run away from it, to avoid it. And this is the piece that ends up coming into narcissistic abuse and coming into the personality disorder that people don't like to hear. Because everybody, like, if you think of narcissism, you probably think of someone either being really prideful, really self-centered, or no empathy. It's probably one of those three things. People like narcissism, one of those three things. Oftentimes, narcissism and no empathy go together. And people normally think narcissists have no empathy, no feelings, no emotions. They're just robots going through life being like, we hate you, we hate you. And they're not really engaged as an actual human being. Well, that would actually be false. They have emotions, they have feelings. They don't know how to express them. They're sedated and they're suppressed. Now, also, they do have a level of empathy. Oh, yeah. Some of you are like, no, I don't like this. Okay, listen to me for a second. In the DSM-5, so if we go very technical and we go into the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Criteria for Narcissistic Personality Disorder used by clinical psychologists all over the world. If we talk about the DSM-5, it says, lacks empathy, semicolon, is unwilling to acknowledge or identify with the feelings and needs of others. Is unwilling to acknowledge or identify with the feelings and needs of others. Now notice it doesn't say that they're void of empathy, that they're not capable of having empathy, that it's impossible for them to even address or see empathy. It says they are avoiding this. Unwilling to acknowledge or identify with the needs of others. This ends up being a massive revelation for a lot of people simply because the narcissist in your life, he's not incapable of empathy. He's just choosing not to show it. He's choosing not to engage with it. Why? Because if he engages with empathy, it's going to reveal that he has problems in his life that he doesn't want to admit. Everything about narcissism stems back to the monster that's inside of him is running away from accountability, responsibility, running away from shame. The monster inside of him is a liar. And until he actually realizes that he's a liar, nothing else is going to change. Nothing else will get better. He will never heal. He will never transform his life. Nothing. Because if he doesn't see that he's lying to himself, nothing will change. So many people are like, well, maybe I can help him. Maybe I can fix him. Well, uh, if he's not willing to be honest, you can't. There's no way for you to be able to help liberate a person who doesn't realize that they're stuck. Or sees that they're stuck in the aspect of some of the narcissistic tendencies, but is unwilling to change them. Well, I like who I am, so why would I even change? I like what I'm getting from you, so why would I even change? Narcissistic abuse is real. It's deadly. It messes with your brain, with your psychology, with your emotions, with your feelings. It messes with every single aspect of you. Having major mental effects, physical effects, you name it. But when you talk about this, the monster that's inside, the monster of narcissism, the biggest monster inside the narcissist is shame and his unwillingness to actually deal with it. He sees it inside of himself. He realizes it inside of even you. And because he can't handle your emotions, he can't handle his emotions. Because he can't handle his emotions, he'll never have space for your emotions. Because he's unwilling to deal with the shame and the guilt means he's unwilling to deal with you. Narcissists are always running from shame. The guilt, the shame... All the different things that trigger a different story in his mind that he's not good enough, that he's not worthy, that he's a bad person. All the things that he does not want to admit are the exact things he has to admit in order for there to be any change. It's like a person trying to find their way from point A to point B. And they know where point B is. They know what the direction is. They know what it is, but they have no clue where they're starting from. So they have no clue the path to get from point A to point B. So they move around and be like, I want to be a good person. I want to tell the truth. I want to be honest. I want to have integrity. Well, but if they don't actually admit that they don't have that currently, then it doesn't actually matter. You see, a narcissist will be like, well, yeah, I want to be better, but I'm actually not a bad person. So therefore, I don't really know what to be better about. So without the lack of like just awareness of saying, okay, this is where you are, no change will actually happen. No transformation is possible if he's living in lies. So while you're dealing with the narcissist and you're dealing with narcissistic abuse, just understand if he's a liar and he's unwilling to address his shame, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to transform. You might as well walk away now because if you don't, you're going to continue to gaslight yourself to stay in a relationship that's ultimately killing you one step at a time. This piece about narcissistic abuse is extremely real and extremely present. Most people shove it to the side and don't really realize that it's an issue. He is a liar. He's a liar to you, and he's a liar to himself. If he doesn't change that, then nothing will ever change. 
he will be stuck here permanently for a long period of time. That's it. And inside of all of this, he's running away from the monster inside, which is shame. And his unwillingness to actually work through it. His unwillingness to actually embrace shame and actually see, wait a second, shame is trying to show me different problems that I have. Shame is trying to expose the issues that I have going on. It's actually not trying to kill me. It's trying to say, hey, wake up and actually fix this. But fixing it means he has to be accountable and responsible. And he actually has to walk through this piece of dealing with shame. So he can become better, but he's unwilling to do this. If he's unwilling to see this, acknowledge this, and be, tell, and be able to tell the truth, nothing's going to change. You need to run. You need to get away. You need to focus on you, your growth, and your development. Because it's not getting better the longer you stay in a toxic relationship thinking that you're going to make it get better. Thinking that you're going to help him. Thinking that you're going to save him. When in reality, you're not saving anyone. You're just losing yourself. If I can help you with this today, go to rawmotivations.com. I want to explain to you and show you how to help liberate you from the trauma bond, the toxicity, the triggers that are currently leaving you sidelined, confused, and lost inside of the chaos.